What you see here is the instrumentation we use uh, both for laboratory and field studies, but especially for some of these uh, studies in the field where we go to the real world and measure what the, the pollution, what these aerosols are made of. And uh, we can see here one of uh, several instruments. This is um, an aerosol mass spectrometer. And uh, what this does is to measure the composition. And we suck the air with a pump, rushes in. And then this part of the instrument is what does the chemical analysis. And it, it's all in a very compact package. It's not normally as messy as it is now. And as you see, it has wheels. So basically, we can roll the whole thing and take it to Mexico or take it to the Arctic or that kind of thing. And what this allows us to do is to analyze the, the composition of the particles of these pollutants in real time. What we do is we suck them through here. So here we have particles suspended in air. And what a particle is, is just lots of molecules stuck together in a piece of solid or liquid. So basically you may have a billion molecules all stuck together, but then even though it's a, million, a billion molecules, it's still very small. It's maybe one micron, which is a hundred times thinner than human hair. So you cannot see it, yet it has lots of molecules. So then it's coming in, and then here at this junction, what it does is going to impact a hot surface. So the molecule comes in, it impacts this hot surface under vacuum because we have created the vacuum with these pumps. And then lots of molecules come flying off very quickly. So they all come flying off. And then just as they are flying off, we have a filament, a hot filament like in a light bulb, and we are raining electrons on them as they try to basically escape away uh, because they've been heated. That interaction produces some ions, and that's what allows us to do the analysis. Once we have ions, we can basically use to steer them with these electric fields. And so what we do is we steer them into here, and then we make them fly like this in this box. This is called the mass spectrometer, so they fly like this. And then we finally detect them. And what happens in this thing is we, all, we basically give all the ions the same push, but uh, what you find is that the lighter ions with the same push end up running faster. The heavier ions, you give them the same push, and they go more slowly. So after this distance, some of them arrive earlier, some of them arrive later. That's what we call a time of flight mass spectrometer. We just measure the time, and then we can relate the time to their chemical composition. And that's how we know what the particles are made of. And this is a technique that's used in many instruments in, in laboratories. What's more unusual here is that we're actually packaged it in a, in a system that you can see has wheels and is in a rack that we can use. We can use to start rolling this over and take it, uh, if I remove the brakes, and then uh, we could take it to Mexico, we take it, to, uh, take it somewhere else and, and do that analysis there. The instrument allows us to do uh, a couple of things. One, it allows us to determine how much of these different pollutants is there and also what the pollutants are. So you may be flying, for example, through a volcanic plume. You may see that there is a lot of sulfur because volcanoes make sulfur and that's what then they make particles of. If you fly through a forest fire, you may find a lot of organic material because trees are made out of cellulose and organic material. And then when you burn them, you basically put a lot of that carbon-based material, that organic material in the air. And and what's, what's, why these instruments are so interesting and why we, people want us to participate in these experiments is because we can do both. We can tell what, what they are made of and how much is there. That's really the combination that's powerful.